Hi everybody, I'm Adam Steele from Hop Pole Studios, and this is a kick drum microphone. Or is it? Stay tuned to find out just how versatile this microphone can be. So this microphone is the Lewitt Audio DTP640 Rex and this video is brought to you in collaboration with Lewitt Audio full transparency this is a sponsored video so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best not to go on and on about how good this microphone is uh, but the purpose of this video is to show you that this microphone is capable of a lot more than just being a kick drum microphone. Of course, it's very good in that role. And I'm going to be talking you through uh, a song that I wrote very recently for a friend of mine. And with Lewitt, we decided we wanted to show off different things that this microphone can do and talk about why it can do those things. So, you're hearing this microphone right now as the voiceover mic. I mean, it's not the prettiest voiceover mic, I'll be honest with you there. But it certainly does the job. And the reason that it can do this job quite well, despite the fact that it's big and chunky, is that it's actually two microphones in one. So, uh, as you can see on the image in front of your very eyes, Inside this uh, protective basket, there are two capsules. One is a dynamic microphone that is like, you know, the typical, I don't know, SM57 or other dynamic mic. Uh, it's, it's that kind of thing. But then also next to it, the smaller one is a small diaphragm condenser microphone. Now, the dynamic microphone side of things gives you that typical dynamic microphone punch so on the kick drum what that's doing is giving you that kind of mid kind of hit so when the kick drum hits it punches through but then the condenser does what i would call the hi-fi thing the low end is a little fuller the top end is uh, much more extended and I start to use words like shiny to describe how the top end sounds on that particular uh, thing. So on the kick drum itself, which is where you would expect to find it, here's how it sounded on the drum kit that we had in there.
pretty good. Uh, now, the reason that that sounded really good as a kick drum microphone and can also be used in other places, and here's the clever bit, is that it has a couple of switches on top. One of those switches is a pad switch for minus 10 or minus 20 dB. So if you've got something really loud like a kick drum or a guitar cabinet or a bass cabinet that's really blasting, then you can use that pad switch so you're not going to overload the capsules inside the mic, not going to overload the microphone preamps that you're sending this out to. And I say microphone preamps multiple because the way that this microphone works, you can see that there's a five pin XLR out, which goes to a special cable, which splits out into two separate microphone outputs and well done Lewitt, they actually label the two of them, so one says condenser, one says dynamic. That way I know which one's which, so when I plug them in I don't get them confused. And the condenser side needs phantom power to power that side of things, which is very normal for condenser microphones. Now, the other switch is the one that really interests me, and it goes from a neutral sound on the bottom and the top. Then on the next click, it really enhances the bottom end of the sound. And then at the very end of the switch, it gives uh, an enhancement in the top end as well. Now on kick drum, that's brilliant because that gives us the low end boof, boof, and a lot of definition and that kind of upper click and punch on the microphone before we've even had to do anything on a mixing desk so live that's really useful but on other sources like uh, vocals or on uh, a guitar cabinet that might be too much and that might give you a right harsh peak so what do you do you just switch that switch back the other way and uh, Lewitt do provide you with a, a little thing that's almost like a flathead screwdriver that you can dig in there, although if you've got a small flat-headed screwdriver you can do that yourself. They've recessed the two uh, settings there so that once they're set you can't accidentally lean on them and click them differently in the middle of a show, which of course anything that can go wrong in the middle of a show will go wrong, we know that for sure. <laughs> And with some compression on there, you can hear that it's really quite nice and sits full and even in the mix and has its place. So well done there. And then the guitar cabinets. Uh, the guitar cabinets, I'm not the only one who does this. Um, I've seen this done with another brand who previously made a microphone like this on guitar cabinets. But very recently, my friend John Brown of the band Monuments has been using this on his guitar cabinets uh, live in the studio because the two capsules inside there are perfectly in phase with each other so you get one big microphone assembly you put it in place on the cabinet and you're not spending ages messing around with trying to get two microphones in phase which can be a faff let's be honest and live especially uh, if you've got two microphones on a guitar cabinet and one of them gets moved, knocked, touched, side of the stage, back of the stage, especially with an aggressive show or just just a, a clumsy roadie, 
uh, then that's going to cause some real issues. So if everything's in one housing and that gets moved a little, at least everything will still be in phase and the front house engineer, monitor engineer can usually correct for that quite quickly. What I like to do with guitar cabinets is I usually have a dynamic, a condenser and a ribbon microphone all together. It's, it's luxurious, I know, it's a little bit extra, uh, but it's a personal preference of mine. In the studio that usually takes me quite a long time to get three microphones perfectly in phase. Getting two microphones perfectly in phase takes me a while, uh, three really takes the time, but not with this. Uh, this microphone, I can get this, so what I've been doing with guitar cabinets is the two uh, capsules are in a line down uh, vertically, so I position the mic like that vertically on the guitar cabinet and sweep it left to right until it's in the right place. Then I know that two of the capsules are in phase with each other and then I can add a ribbon microphone. And since Lewitt Audio don't make ribbon microphones at this time, uh, I am using a handmade ribbon microphone from Extinct Audio. So uh, the condenser gives me the super airy top end and a bit of a defined super low. Uh, the dynamic gives me that really aggressive punch in the mid range. And then the ribbon is just me feeling luxurious and getting a, uh, a fuller low mid sound, which for a lot of genres you don't need at all. Uh, it's just a personal preference thing and if somebody sent me uh, something like this without the uh, ribbon I'd be more than happy with it. Here's something from a band called Mischwald that I was tracking a few days ago and we soloed some of the guitars there and they sound huge and they were tracked as you'll see with a reamper and uh, a decent set of valve amps through a 4x12 and using the DTP 640 Rex and that ribbon mic. I'll show you them actually. Uh, so the left mic there is the uh, Lewitt 640 DTP Rex, which is technically a kick drum microphone, but with the switches set properly, it's a really good all rounder. And the right one is my uh, Extinct Audio Black Ops. And between them, everything's sounding awesome. So, kick drum mic or not kick drum mic? You decide. Uh, this, like I said earlier, has been brought to you in collaboration with Lewitt Audio, but hopefully you've seen that this microphone is far more versatile than just something you stuff in a kick drum. It works great for that, but if you've got a limited mic locker, take a second look. I've been Adam Steele, this has been the DTP640 Rex, and that's been Lewitt Audio. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you soon. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop Pole Studios. See you there.